Hello, welcome to our third YouTube video ever. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own filter uh, for your fish aquarium. Now this particular filter is for this. Uh, this is basically a 40 gallon filter uh, or, and water pump. So we are going to replace this nasty guy and I'm going to make one of these homemade. Now yesterday we did a water change in our aquarium. We have a very small 10 gallon aquarium uh, and I am notoriously bad at taking care of this aquarium. I probably have not done a water change in maybe mm, three months. Really you should be doing a water change at least once a month. Uh, some people do them every two weeks. I am, like I said, notoriously bad at doing water changes. And uh, for those of you that don't know how to do a water change, uh, I kind of want to explain this because some people don't know how easy it is to do. This is a, a, a siphon mechanism. You stick this end into your fish tank. You make sure the bucket that you're draining into is at a lower level than your fish tank. So we'll say that the fish tank is up here, the bucket's down here, and although it's gross, you have to suck this until the water reaches your lips and then you spit out the water into the bucket that you're draining into. Leave the tube in and you need to take the end of this and you need to suction deep underneath all of your sediment, all of your rocks, whatever substrate you have at the bottom of your fish aquarium. You want to run the end of this into the very bottom to make sure to suck up all that nasty stuff that's in the very bottom of the fish tank. Now I am, like I said, notoriously bad at doing these water changes. Generally speaking, you want to do about a 10% water change mm, every two weeks. I do, because I'm bad at doing these water changes as much as I should do them, uh, I do about a 30 to 40% water change about every three months. Uh, and so far we've been okay. We had about six female betas about three or four months ago. We're down to two. Uh, when we tested our water, we did have very high nitrites, and that's because I don't do frequent water changes like I should. Now, yesterday I did, a, like I said, about a 30 or 40 percent water change. We have a 10 gallon tank. This bucket holds, I think, two and a half gallons. So I filled this bucket up to the top, but you also have to keep in mind we have about two inches of gravel at the bottom of our fish tank. So I would say that brings our fish tank. Uh, water capacity down to about eight gallons. So, uh, like I said, there was about a 30% water change about. So I, um, so here we are with the bucket uh, that I used. And of course, I'm doing this outside because my wife does not like this dirty fish water to drip inside of our kitchen. Now, I never changed my filter on the same day that I changed my water. The reason is, is the good bacteria that is in this filter and on the carbon that's inside the filter, I still want to remain in the tank, especially when I do that high of a, uh, uh, that full of a water change. So if you're, if you're changing your water, like I said, every two weeks, you're doing about 10% and you're removing 10% of the water, uh, you probably could change the filter and the carbon at the same time. But in my case, uh, since I did such a heavy water change and you took so much water out of the tank, I decided for 24 hours I was going to leave the old uh, filter and the, the carbon in for an additional 24 hours. Now this is one that came uh, in a package. There's carbon inside the middle, just like this, okay? Uh, now I could use this right now, but for uh, training purposes I figured I would show you guys how to make your own filter. So I'm going to just take the old filter and use it as a model for my new one. So I'm going to just take scissors and basically cut a rectangle that's approximately the same size as our filter. And of course you need to make a pocket, so I need to do two of these. And this one I'm going to make a little bit larger because keep in mind when you're making a pocket you need the pocket larger than the, than the original, so, so that's the case here. So this is a little bit larger, the second one, and we're going to, uh, I'm going to duct tape the sides here. And as you can see, 
the first rectangle I cut is a little slightly smaller than the left than the, than the other one and the reason why is because I want to curl the back one over the front one I guess that's not a very necessary thing but that's what I'm doing everyone can do it kind of their own way so we have the duct tape here and obviously when you're making your own I am removing some of the filter capacity by covering some of it up with duct tape. Now this duct tape curled, so we're gonna, actually we're gonna start a whole new piece here. Okay. Um, this is polyester batting, which is precisely what this is made out of. Uh, polyester batting is needed over cotton batting. Cotton batting will, um, basically the fibers in cotton will fall apart over time and you don't want that because uh, you don't want those cotton fibers to, to enter into your pump as those will damage the pump. It's very important that you use polyester. So we're going to cut this piece here. So you see I got the first side done. And again, the main purpose of even making a pocket is so that when you put the carbon in the middle, which we're not there yet, but when you put the carbon in the middle, you basically want don't want all the carbon to kind of fall at the bottom of the filter. As you can see, this one, you can't really see it because it's in there, but the carbon goes all the way up to the top. So you need some sort of pocket to kind of hold the carbon in place so that it doesn't all fall down to the bottom of the filter. So I'm just gonna tape this a second time on this side. Okay, as you can see, this tape is not adhering as well as I'd like, but again, it's still gonna end up back in this, uh, this housing unit for the pump. So even if the tape falls apart and doesn't hold these two pieces of batting together, it's not a big deal because again, it's gonna all be housed in here. The whole purpose of this pocket per se is to provide a place to hold the carbon in place. So we're gonna do the bottom of the filter now. And as you can see, I'm just gonna fold it around this way, fold it around this way. So, and you know, you don't have to be an expert at this. You're just basically taping together two pieces of batting. That's it and you're gonna fill the center of two pieces with carbon. Now this carbon has, I believe, something else in it in addition. You see the, uh, the gray pieces in there. Um, that, I believe, is um, something to remove additional chemicals in, other than just nitrates and nitrites, but I'm not certain. This is just what my carbon came with. You can buy carbon, activated carbon, that only has black pellets. Uh, this one had black pellets and gray pellets. Again, I'm not exactly sure what the gray pellets do that the black ones don't, but um, it was the same price and I thought, well, I'll try it. So, so this is not that beautiful. I mean, you can see my job here is not the greatest, but we have two pieces of batting and in the middle we have a pocket. Okay, so I am going to remove the clip that holds, that pinches this closed. And so you'll see as I pull this out, there is the carbon that came in this pre-done filter. It's nasty, needs to be replaced. Now, some people, once they get their aquarium established, quit using carbon. Uh, once your aquarium is established and has been running for about six months, you really don't need the carbon. Now, I do because, like I've said, I am terrible at doing water changes. So I am one of those people that I desperately still need to use carbon when I do my water changes. Now, I will say this, though. I do water changes about every three months. I only change my filter and put fresh carbon in about every six months. Again, I am one of those people that I'm not doing it the way it should be done. 
So do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> All right, so now we got a pocket in here. We have this, I don't know what we call this thing, but this is what comes with your standard filter, this plastic thing that goes in the middle. It also maintains the carbon where it should be. And we will fill this up. This batting, by the way, came in about, I believe, six yards of batting uh, for about $8. Um, and this carbon for this whole canister was about 12 or $13. So you are saving money by doing this. Now this is a lot of work to do yourself, but if you have, say, four or five aquariums in your house or more, you will save lots of money over the long run making your own filters. However, if you only have one aquarium, you're better off buying the pre-done ones because the time it takes to make these is significant, but you will save a boatload of money if you uh, make your own filters like I am. Now. This is gonna be tricky. I have to hold this open and pour the carbon in at the same time without spilling the carbon. So that's gonna be a little tricky thing here. But it seems to be going okay. Okay, I'm gonna pour it in a little bit more. Okay, I think we're good to go. I feel plenty of carbon in there. I'm going to pinch it back shut. Got too much carbon right at the top here. All right, now let's pinch this pocket shut. Okay, put the clip on. All right, so now we got our own filter, and in fact, it actually has more carbon in it than probably the ones that normally come in it. So we probably won't have to change this for a while. Now this guy, I some people say to rinse this out. I never rinse this out. Um, I don't actually touch this. This, this guy probably has plenty of healthy bacteria on here. And as the water flows through the filter, it actually hits this second. So uh, this, is, this is the thing that probably should not be messed with. I would not ever rinse this off. All right, so we're going to slip in our pre-done filter or our homemade filter. I'm going to slip in this guy and push him to the bottom, push that to the bottom, and we are set to go to put this back into our fish tank. That's good to go, Jude. Nice mite. All right. Is this going in our pond or is it going in the fish tank? It's going back into the fish tank. I knew it. 